reclining postures. So you're going to come down and we're going to do some poses on our stomach and then we will turn over and we will do others on our back. So to begin, just come down to tabletop. So we'll start in tabletop and making sure your hip, your knees are stacked underneath your hips, hip width apart, hands are stacked underneath your shoulders, shoulder width apart. Again, here you can take a couple of cat cows. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do several, just do the one right now, but you can do several cat cows here to open up. You can also, as you're getting stronger over time, you can do sunbursts. Left leg back, hips level, right arm out in front reaching and hold. You can crunch those and then coming down, checking your alignment, doing the other side. So that is over time. That would be a really good one to add because that's going to help strengthen everything in the glutes. So for right now, come down into child's pose. However that looks for you, again, Kirsten, use that towel. Put it between your knees and as you come down, only come down as far as that allows you to. That's going to take less pressure off of the hips. So coming down and then coming back up, we're going to go into a wider stance. So knees out as wide as the mat and then come down to your elbows. And reach your tailbone back toward the back wall. So we're almost in child's pose. This is, uh, this is just simply called downward facing frog. So you're gonna really feel this in the front. If you're doing it correctly, you're gonna feel it in the fronts of your hip flexors as they're reaching back. And take hold back for three to five breaths. And then come back up, stack your hands, hip width or shoulder width apart, hands under and then bringing your legs down. Come down into just a modified plank, coming down all the way to the mat. Here we have a few different poses we can do. So I'm just gonna take you through some of them and show you. This is Cobra. Notice I'm Reaching up, opening up my heart. Elbows are somewhat bent directly toward the body. So this is Cobra. This is up dog, arms fully extended and reaching to get legs off the mat. Cobra is right here. Once you've done Cobra, come back down. Because once we've inverted the spine, we want to flatten it again. Coming back up one more time, Cobra. You can really feel this in your lats and triceps. Coming back down, bring your hands to the front. So stack your elbows underneath your shoulders, bringing your hands together in front of you. So you're kind of got a triangle going on there. Fingertips to the mat drawing your fingertips toward you so you're engaging your lats and triceps. Open up your heart, reaching so you can really feel this stretching in your core. This is Sphinx. And just reaching, drawing those fingertips toward you, really engaging those lats. Getting a good lat and tricep workout here and release. Allow your head to fall. And one more time. Draw. And release. 
coming down all the way, reaching your hands out in front of you. Take two resting breaths. Bring your arms behind you in airplane, palms up, reaching your palms. You're only gonna lift your chest as far as your ribs come off the mat and then lifting your thighs off the mat behind you. Reach, this is locust. So reaching, fingertips and toes toward the back wall, toes pointed, release down. Forehead to the mat. Breathe. Round your shoulders out toward the mat. And lift. And release. And Bending your left knee, right hand in front of you, kind of bracing so your arm parallel with the front of your mat. Left hand, right hand is going to reach back toward the left foot. And if you can lift up, great. If not, then just stay right here. If it's accessible, this is half bow. Again, this is really opening up the fronts of the hip flexors. Even right here, you're getting those hip flexors released. Other side, so right hand, elbow, wrist, parallel with the front of the mat to root down. Left hand on the right foot. Left leg extended and lift. And again, hold that for as many breaths as you'd like. Or as you are able, come down all the way to reverse the curvature of the spine. And then if it's accessible to come into full bow, you're going to bend both legs Grabbing your feet, this is an eventual goal, and lifting. So that you're rooting down in the pelvis, and then you can release. And for bow, if you're not able to grab your feet, come up like this. Just trying to get those thighs off the mat just a little bit. Reaching your hands back in airplane. Either way. All right, after that, hands. Stacked underneath the shoulders, come up again to modified plank. Child's pose to reset. Come back to tabletop and coming down now. We're going to do a couple of reclining poses on our backs. So, coming down and again, have your um, Blanket handy to use as a bolster where you need it. And I'll show you a couple of options. So coming down slowly. The goal is eventually that when you come down, you are using your core to recline. Here, whatever is going to be most comfortable for you, because you do want to be comfortable in the poses, you can take your blanket and put it underneath your sacrum. So just below your tailbone, your sacrum is that triangular shaped bone at the bottom of the tailbone on either side of the pelvis. And you can rest your bolster there if it makes it more comfortable for you in reclining poses. You can also put it underneath your head or your neck if it makes it more comfortable for your neck in reclining poses. So, let's do some regular reclining poses here. So, starting with reclining mountain. 
feet fully extended as if you're walking on the wall, hip width apart, quads engaged so that you have your knees point, pointing forward, tailbone down, shoulders back and down, rib cage in, ears over the shoulders, palms forward, reaching, shoulders back and down, fully engaged. Check your engagement. You should be engaged every muscle from the tips of your feet to the tips of your fingers all the way through the back. Now turn your palms over, palms to the mat. We're going to go legs up the wall. This is where having your blanket underneath your tailbone can be very helpful. When I say blanket, it can be blanket or block or pillow, whichever is available. So palms, we're going to root down in our palms here and lift our legs to legs up the wall. So feet as if you're planting your feet firmly on the ceiling and then coming back down slowly. Not touching the mat, but then coming back up one more time and legs up the wall and holding. Hold this for a few breaths. Just allowing that blood flow to really move. You can really feel that blood flow, how it goes through the hips. If, because of your hips, if necessary, put a micro bend in your knees. Put your, finger, your hands behind the upper part of your knees and hold your legs here giving yourself a little bit more support. And then as it's accessible, straightening your legs a little bit more. Eventually, maybe being able to go down to one finger, helping to hold, and then being able to eventually release and using the strength here. And coming back down. And then knees to chest. Extending your, and you can keep the blanket here. You may choose to move it for reclining spinal twist. Left leg extended, right hand on the left knee. Right hand is going to go out in a wing gazing over the right hand as you cross body twist your lower body, stacking your hips one on top of the other, but keeping both shoulders on the mat, gazing over your right arm. Really starting to as we're winding down, slowing down your breath, resting those muscles into the twist, Taking several breaths and then slowly coming back, drawing both knees to chest, releasing the right leg down, right hand on the outside of the left knee, left arm out in the wing, gazing over the left arm, keeping the left shoulder on the mat, going cross body, stacking the hips. And breathing, trying to start resting into the pose. All of this has been so tight for so long, it's going to take time to loosen it. So you may be right here, and that's okay. You may be right here. So it's just wherever you're feeling the stretch, but not feeling a pull. You don't want any pain at all. When you find that edge, back off just a little bit, because you've got... There's plenty of time to deepen those stretches over time. And then coming back to center and again, drawing knees to chest. Lift your sacrum off the mat, rounding out your crown. Release tailbone down. And again, lifting, exhale, drawing navel, or 
forehead to the knee, and then releasing down, we're going to cross the right leg over the left. And again, you don't have to do all of these every time. I'm just trying to show you a variety of different poses. So we're going to go into pretzel. We're going to, with right leg is crossed over the left, we're going to twist our lower body to the left. Arm, right arm is going to be out in a wing. Left arm can be in a wing, or you can have elbow bent and use the compression of this elbow to the mat to help you get that twist in. Or lastly, your left hand can be on the outside of that right knee, helping you get that twist. And you want to keep right shoulder to the mat as you're twisting just the lower body. These twists are so important for learning to re-strengthen all of those hip flexor muscles that were torn and cut into, helping them to correct the memory that they have. You can hold this pose for one to three minutes. Often in class, that's what we do. We will hold it for at least a full minute. And then when you come out, come out slowly from this. So then just kind of walking your foot up, getting your hips back, releasing, crossing over the other side, left arm out in a wing, and again with the right arm, wing, elbow, or hand to the outside of that left knee. Twisting over to the right. And breathing. Again, holding this pose for as long as you'd like. Coming back to center. And again, Bolsters and props are definitely our friend for Happy Baby because of my arch issue. I always put my block or a towel or bolster underneath my tailbone for Happy Baby. And so you're going to draw your feet up, allowing your knees to fall open from and from the insides on the arches of your foot grabbing your feet you can walk your hands up to the ball of your foot and resting in happy baby seeing little grace and you can figure out why this is called happy baby and just allowing your legs to fall open this is another wonderful wonderful hip stretch just breathing Bringing, releasing the hands, bringing the knees together, bringing knees to chest, and then coming back down, releasing the um, prop, left knee, again, I'm just, I'm showing you a bunch of different poses, you can put all of them together, pick and choose on different days. So, left knee is going to be bent, this is eye of the needle. We're going to bring our right ankle and cross it like we did in chair pose, um, in our chair poses, into that figure four, taking our hands and clasping our fingers together underneath the left knee. And if you can lift, you may not be able to lift it off the mat. That's totally fine. You may be able to lift it off the mat and keep your back completely and, and head completely on the mat. That's fine. However, this pose is accessible. Bringing it in, that, that left leg drawing it in with outward rotation of the right, you can use your elbow to push that right knee open 
more and that thigh lifting just rib cage off the mat and holding it's a great core exercise but right here you're getting really good hip and glute stretch so regardless of where you are and how deeply you do this pose here here or here just opening up this leg so any of those variations are still getting you those stretches in here that you need and then releasing the right leg down and then doing the same with the left so one thing that's going to be really important is always do the stretches eye of the needle through that right leg always do the stretches on both sides obviously you're going to be able to go a lot further on one side than the other but it's important for muscle memory that we always work both sides of the body so even though one side is going to go more deeply because of the injuries to your hip it's important to do both sides and again whichever level here opening up because even if you are right here you're opening up use that hand to open up this left hip and you're getting the stretch here and you're also getting it deep in that psoas in that quad muscle in the back and then our last two poses bringing the soles of the feet together and coming into bound angle. So this is reclining bound angle, just as we did in seated postures. Hands on the inside of the thighs, gently helping to open up the thighs, releasing those hip flexors, trying to rest them. I have a tendency to hold mine tight, and when we do that, we're fighting against the pose and we're not able to go as deeply, so trying to release. And open up. And then inhaling, bringing your knees back to center. Stacking, making sure our feet are hip width apart, about six inches from our tailbone, palms down. We're going to lift up into bridge. So we're going to lift from the center of our body. We're rooting down in our feet, making sure not, we're not using our toes, but the three points of our feet and our shoulders rooting down. Lifting in the hips, allowing this stretch to be a front body stretch. Try to relax the glutes and really stretch the front body. You can hold this pose as long as you want. Making sure your knees don't fall open, but your knees stay hip width apart or together. Together, the problem with them together is it's harder to relax the glutes. So if you keep them hip width apart, it's easier to keep the glutes relaxed and then coming down one vertebra at a time. You can do that pose several times or just one time with an extended hold. And then releasing our legs down all the way, allowing our feet to just fall open, knees and thighs to fall open, tailbone hips completely relaxed, rib cage, chest relaxed, lastly our shoulders arms falling open and resting here in corpse focusing on God's promises I love from Philippians 4 do not be anxious about anything but in everything with prayer and supplication 
make your requests known to God and the peace that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. As you rest in corpse, sighing to self and resting in the sun, remembering Romans 8.28, and all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. And remembering from Psalms, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And when all else fails, we call on him to be our strength, our peace, and our comfort. And it's in Jesus' wonderful holy name that I lift both of you and Grayson to him, thanking him for the unity of bringing the two of you together and your love for him and for each other through the challenges. That his blessings, his strength, his reminders daily that he is with you will be present. And that all three of you will grow in strength and in love for each other and for God during this time. In our Savior's wonderful, holy, loving name we pray. Amen.